There are currently 1.6 million transgender Americans. 300,000 of those Americans are under the age of 18. In the past five years, there have been over 100 anti-LGBTQ plus laws put into place. And half of those came this year. I'm not shocked that the majority of these bills were put forth by Republican lawmakers based on the religious beliefs and values. But here we are today. That's what I'm talking about today, folks. Welcome to my podcast. I'm Darren Harris. This is the Darren Harris Show. That was uh, something that's been on my mind lately because there's just a whole bunch of laws, much like black people, There's been a whole bunch of laws put into place that are anti-LGBTQ. And I have some questions. One question that I have, this is one question that I have that I'm sure, you know, a few other people may have this same question. But this question has just been burning at me since all of this stuff has gone down. And I want to know that why as we, as Americans care so much about what other people do with their lives. Why? Why do we care so much? I don't know why we feel like we have some sort of control or authority over other people's lives based on our religious beliefs or political affiliations. I don't get it. I don't get what entitles people. That right there, and that right there, that is exactly what it is, is entitlement. It's entitlement. I don't understand it. Transgender Americans, they've been ridiculed, humiliated, and in some instances they've been victims of a violent, a violent crime and murder. And all these people are trying to do is do what everybody else is doing, is just live their lives in peace and happiness. I mean, for a long time, gay people, they just got the short end of the stick. They just got beat up on. They just got, they, they, but now it seems like the transgender Americans have kind of taken that place. And man, people are just up at arms about it. And more in particular, it is the Republican Party. And I don't understand. I don't understand. I think lawmakers really have forgot one really, really important thing. They have forgotten that these people that they take a shit on all the time, these people are citizens of the United States of America. And in America, it's life, liberty, and the pursuit of motherfucking happiness. There have been I mean, just like just like black people, there have been many laws that have been passed to hurt the LGBT community. But especially recently, our transgender citizens of America. Many states, I mean, all I mean, there's many states and things things keep coming about. There's many states that have banned an assortment of medical procedures for minors. No gender affirming care for minors. Some people agree with it. Some people disagree with it. The governor down here in Florida has made it not only illegal, but a felony with up to five years in prison for providing gender affirming care or abortions. That to me, is absolutely unnecessary. It's unnecessary. It really, I mean, that's just my, 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 
my opinion. I think that's a little that's a little hard. That's that's leaning in a felony and five years in prison. Bullshit. But what a lot of states have been doing, which I don't necessarily know that I have a problem with this, but a lot of states are now beginning to define by law what male and female is. Hear me? They're defining now by law what makes a genetic male and what makes a genetic female. And if you were born a male and you've had a transition or had transitional surgery, that does not make you a female to people. And honestly, if you want to be technical, it doesn't really make you a female physically. I mean, your appearance, you are a female, but all your internal organs are male. Okay. A transgender woman will never have a child, will never be able to carry a child. It's just a fact of life. It's just it's just a fact of life. Simple as that. They'll never have a menstrual cycle. It's as simple as that. But are they any less women? That depends on who you ask. It really does. It depends on solely who you ask if these people are women. There are so many people that are like, that's not a woman. And there are other people that are, that is a woman. That's a woman. That person is whatever they say they want to be. There are a lot, There have been laws put into place that prevent transgender women and girls from playing on female teams and vice versa. You can't even use the pronouns in some schools. That's, that's just going to cause problems. These are just some of the efforts made by lawmakers to try to fight the ideology, ideology of transgenderism. Listen, and believe me, man, there are many, many more that they're cooking up. It's crazy. Many Americans, they oppose transgenderism with every fiber in their body based on their religious beliefs. There are many Americans who oppose transgenderism simply because they think it's disgusting. There are many people who oppose transgenderism because they think it's perverse. And people ask me a lot. They ask me, Darren, what do you think about transgenderism? What do you think about it? And I had to sit down and think about it for a minute, but I didn't have to think very long. And here is how I feel about transgenderism. I don't give a fuck. You need me to uh, <clears throat> say that again? I don't give a fuck. I mean, I could give zero fucks about what you decide to call yourself. I really don't. I mean, honestly, there are people running around here having plastic surgeries to make their whole face look like a cat. You got whole dog people out here, motherfuckers having surgery for all kind of shit. It's ridiculous. You, the bottom, listen, you can pass all the laws you want. You can pass laws until the cows come home. But if people really want to have this procedure, they're just going to go to other countries and have the procedure done. Is it dangerous? Yes. But what other choice do these people have? Of course, you can say, oh, they can stay the way they are. But, but that's not up for me or you to determine. It really isn't. It's not up for me or you to determine what these people can and cannot do with their lives, with their bodies. But there, there's always somebody who wants to make a law 
because they want to control you. And that's really what it is. It's all about control. They just want to control. They just want to control what you do. They want to control how you approach society, their society, or so-called their society. And that's, that's really what it is. That's really what it is. It's a group of people that have created this society, and they want this society to stay the way that they want this society to stay. But they can't. It can't. It can't. It can't. It can't stay. It's always going to change. It's always going to change. I don't care how many laws you pass to try and revert people back to the Stone Age. Things are always going to evolve. Things are always going to change. I do have some questions, though. I have some questions about all this gender affirming care. I really do. I have I have some questions about some some actual legitimate I think are legitimate questions about medical status. You know, and and, and things that people go through medically. I mean like are fake titties affected by this? Are they? I mean, what about penis implants? Is that uh, is that affected by this? By all these laws? I mean, you know, fake titties, I mean, that's a real thing to a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of reasons. There's ladies that have had a double mastectomy and they have two breast implants. Does that count? Can we not do that anymore? Or does that... Or you just waved that. Or did you think about that? Or did you not? My my wife is at high risk. She took the BRCA test, and she's at high risk for breast cancer. But we're doing everything that we can to try and to try to get out in front of it. So we've been looking at different options, and one of the options was a double mastectomy and, and a reconstruction surgery. And we talked to the doctor about it, and everything seems to be a go, but what about me? Men get breast cancer too. What if I got breast cancer and wanted to have, I don't know, one of my breasts replaced? <laughs> I don't know. Can I not? Because of my gender? I don't know. It doesn't, a lot of it is, is crazy to me. But even more so than that, the other question I have, this is a really good question, though. This question right here probably is the most poignant question in this whole podcast and that question is why do you give a fuck why do you give a fuck about what someone else does in their house why do you give a fuck about what somebody else does with their body why do you give a fuck what somebody else does in their life why do you care why do you feel the need to control what others do and most importantly, what business of it is yours? And I can answer that question. I can, I can answer that question right now without even trying very hard. The answer to that question is, it ain't your fucking business. All right? It's got nothing to do with you. It's got nothing to do with me. It's got nothing to do with what I like or what I would like to see. It has nothing to do with my sexual orientation or my preference. It has nothing to do with me and everything to do with that person and their ability to chase what makes them happy. You feel me? And that right there, folks, quite simply put, is none of our business. My business 
It's none of your motherfucking business. It's not your business what I choose to do. I don't give a fuck what kind of laws you pass. It'll never be none of your business. It'll never be your business. But you still do the best you can to insert yourselves into the private lives or the bedrooms of American citizens. I mean, what the fuck do you have to do with the critical choices that this person has to make in their own personal life? If you don't make any choices for that person, if you're not paying this person's rent or car note or any kind of, then you shouldn't have shit to say. As a matter of fact, it should be illegal for you to say shit. It should be illegal for you to say shit if you don't, if my business is, it ain't your fucking business, mind your business. But that's the thing. They pass laws to make it their business so that they can come and disrupt whatever you have going on, disrupt your little bit of happiness and fill your life with so much stress. They have stripped away health care for 300,000 Americans. Anyway, anyway, I don't care if you have insurance, no gender affirming care. That's wild business. You can't, you can't tell me what I can and can't do. You just won't be able to. Now, I do believe in this. If you have had gender, like a, a gender trans, if you were transitioning, if you've transitioned and now you were a man, but now you're a woman, I think, me personally, that that should be disclosed to any person that you date. That is information is very important that bit of information should be disclosed and outside of that you know rock out with your cock out i don't give a shit you know what i mean but as long as you are truthful and you're honest and say hey look you know i went through this surgery so on and so forth blah 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 i take these hormones to do it. and let this person make the decision for themselves okay don't try to flim flam or bamboozle anybody into a relationship with you because that's wrong. Let me tell you a story, something that happened to me in New York. <laughs> I was going to work one day and I was on the train. I was late. I was late to work and I'm on the A train and I'm, dr and I'm, I'm on the train and we get down to Columbus Circle. But before we get to Columbus, so yeah, yeah, this is what happened. We're riding down. So I get on the, the train at 178th Street and I notice that there's like a little Spanish girl just staring at me, just like staring at me uncontrollably, just like, like, like I was going to say something. So, you know, very attractive, very attractive. I'm riding on the train. I'm late to work. So the train stops at Columbus Circle, 59th Street. And and she gets off, and I said, fuck it, man. I jumped off behind her, and I said, listen, I noticed that you were staring at me on the train. I'm late to work. I don't have a lot of time. I, I, you know, I was just wondering if I could get your phone number. Maybe we can, you know, we can talk. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, I got her phone number, and I went off and bounced to work. So I got home, and for the next week, I talked to this person on the telephone. Couldn't tell anything. We just talk to this person on the phone everything was cool everything was everything was all right and she invited me to dinner why don't you why don't you come to dinner you should come to dinner okay fine uh, come to dinner so i got all dressed up and i went and i i went to her house for dinner so really nice apartment very very well put together very very nice and I went inside and we sat down and we talked and we laughed and, you know, we were sitting there basically getting to know each other. So we're watching, you know, we're just watching movies, waiting for dinner to be ready. You know, she was cooking dinner. So waiting for dinner to be ready. And I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. And she was like, well, I got to go to the bathroom also. I was like, well, why don't you go first? You know, you, you, you're cooking. You got to get back out here. So she went bathroom, and then I went to the bathroom. So I go in the bathroom. I close the door, lock the door, da 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 and I, and I turn around, but I noticed that the toilet seat was up. 
And I don't know, you know, I, I just I didn't really think anything heavy about it. I didn't think too much at that particular second. But then I was like, hold on, the toilet seat was up and I'm just starting to look around the bathroom and I see everything that you think that you should see at a woman's apartment. I see underwear hanging from the, the shower curtain. I see bras. I see, you know, little you know flip flops and socks and little cutesy stuff and makeup and yada, yada, yada. But then I started realizing that I'm not seeing any feminine hygiene products. Hmm. So without being too much of a, a snoop, I started looking around and I'm realizing that there are no feminine hygiene products here. So I'm in the bathroom and I'm like, okay, what the fuck is really going on here? So I, um, man, I step out of the bathroom and immediately, immediately she's all, Papa, I want to kiss you. I want to kiss you so much. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. And I was just as honest I, as I could be. And I asked, I said, hey, listen, are you a man or are you a woman? Oh, Papi, what do you see? What do you what are you looking at? What do you see? I see some pretty big ass titties. That's that's one thing I see. That's. But I have to ask you again, are you a man or are you a woman? And again, Poppy, what do you see, Poppy? Oh, oh you, you like my you like my breast, Poppy, you see? Huh. Finally I just came out and said it. Do you have a uterus? <laughs> and she said, No. <laughs> no was the answer to that question. No, you don't have a uterus. And Immediately, I was like, oh, shit, you know what I mean? Holy shit. At first, I was I was upset. You know, I was like, yo, that's bullshit. But then I, I started thinking, you know, I, I started thinking. I was like, wow, this motherfucker got me. I mean, like almost really. And the reason why was this. What had happened was this is after a while of, you know, sitting there talking with this person, I realized that this person was a, a very troubled person, you know, very, very troubled person. And at the same time, extremely talented. This person, tiny as he was, he, I say, because after I figured out it was a man, I started, it, there was nothing I could do to start talking to this motherfucker like a man. So I was like, yeah, bro, you know, he, I'm sorry, what's up, man? So what actually ended up, he was a makeup artist for celebrities. He was a celebrity makeup artist, so his makeup was flawless to start with, so I could not tell. Second, it was wintertime, so he had a turtleneck on, so again, I couldn't tell. Third, this motherfucker was 97 pounds, so he looked like he could be a small woman, and that's, I'm not even bullshitting, got me. So, I'm up there in the apartment, I'm mad. <laughs> And I'm like, yo, you shouldn't be, yo, this is bull. But then I started, I was like, yo, but for real, what the fuck made you want to do this? I asked him. This is my first experience with someone going through a transgender uh, transition. I said, what, what, what made you want to do this? And I ended up sitting down and talking to this person for two hours about everything that made them want to do, to want to transition. They were bullied. They were beat up. They, they, they were jumped within an inch of their life a few times for just being gay, for being a gay male. He was young. He couldn't defend himself. No, but this motherfucker was extremely talented. This motherfucker had great, great makeup. And I just was, you know, I was blown away. He did Beyonce's makeup. Mariah Carey he had, he had uh, Madonna in his book. I mean, he rode with a few people. Like for a, like a long time, he was their long time personal makeup artist. And you could tell that he was sad. He was very, very sad. And the reason he was sad is because he couldn't find a relationship. He couldn't find a happy, meaningful relationship with someone. And in that, I mean, I'm a cancer man. I feel for everybody in that. I, I, I was like, wow, I felt sorry for this person. 
you know, because I could not imagine what it must be like to be conflicted the way that he is and and still and still have to go through life. And by the way, at that point in his life, he had only had the top section done. The bottom section was still, you know, men's plumbing. You know, so I was like, well, what the fuck did you think he was going to do with that? You know what I mean? So but I stayed. I ended up staying for dinner. I smoked a couple of joints with him and. You know, he told me about everything that had went down in his life and, you know, and 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 how he was encouraged and, and was just going to continue to look for love and, you know, that he appreciated me. And I told him, I said, listen, man, like right before I left, I said, listen, I said, you're lucky that I am who I am. I am a nice person. I'm a nice person. I was brought I was brought up by good people. You are lucky that. You didn't get somebody else because you could have been killed up here today. Somebody, when they found out that you were a man, you could have been killed up here today. So that's why, that's why it's important, especially if you've gone through transitional surgery, to inform people and let them know so that they have the option for themselves. And I got a friend who was actually into it, you know what I mean? Years after knowing this person, I knew this person for years. We just hang out a bunch. You know what I'm saying? This was my man. But I lost track of him for a while. And then when I finally ran back up on him, like maybe 15 years later, we were talking about relationships, and he told me that he was in a relationship with a transgender woman and that he knew that she was a transgender woman. And I said, okay. I mean, whatever it is for you, man, is whatever it is for you. I don't pry. I don't care. I don't care. The only thing I care about is my friend's level of happiness. That's what I care about. You know what I'm saying? That's what I care about. Listen, I'm going to take a quick, fast break. And when I come back, we're going to continue talking about this because... It needs to be said. It needs to be spoken on. It needs to be talked about. Anybody who wants to talk about this in the future, feel free to DM me. You're more than welcome to DM me. And we can sit up and have a conversation. We can have a dialogue about it. I'm wide open for it. Anybody, anybody, anybody who is for it, anybody who opposes it, anybody. You know, I'm more than welcome. I mean, I'm more than willing to have a dialogue with someone intelligent. Because sometimes on my post, I get a lot of comments in my DMs from people who are less than intelligent. <laughs> this is the Darren Harris Podcast. Yo, what's good, folks? Darren Harris here to tell you about bird dogs. That's B-I-R-D-D-O-G-S. And I'm not talking about the Irish Sutter. I'm talking about these pants and shorts that I just got from BirdDogs.com. Well, first, right off the bat, they make you look wonderful. Bird dogs make you look good. Bird dog stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit you slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird dog shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon shorts, but they fit way better. They also fit better than these regular khaki shorts that you used to get, the cargo shorts. Remember those, the restricting cotton shorts? They fit better than those too. Bird dogs fix this issue by inventing this cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you can get a slimmer fit without having to sacrifice any movement. Bird Dogs also uses this anti-stink, anti-sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So go to BirdDogs.com for your free Yeti-style tumbler with your order. That's Bird Dogs, B-I-R-D-D-O-G-S.com for a free Yeti-style tumbler. You won't want to take your Bird Dogs off. We promise you, you won't. Now, back to the Darren Harris Podcast. Hey folks, what's up? Welcome back to the show. I'm back. Today I'm talking about the issues that the LGBTQ plus community goes through as far as the laws that have been made to, in a nutshell, hurt them. A lot of people are just out to hurt, especially 
I hate to keep saying it, man, but it is what it is. You know, and I, yo, I, I, I got to say it. It's, it's the Republicans. It's re- the Republican Party. The mass majority of these laws that are being proposed and passed are from the Republican Party. The mass majority of these laws that are being proposed and passed are from the Republican Party. They want right inside your business. They want right in your life. Why are you inserting yourself into somebody else's business, especially when you don't want anyone inserting themselves into yours? Feel me? You feel me? You ask any one of these idiots who writes these laws, what's the most valuable What's the most valuable thing in America? What's the most valuable American right? Without a doubt, uh, without a doubt, I'll bet you they say freedom. They say freedom. They say freedom. Freedom is the foundation of our country. Actually, it was racism and slavery, but that's another podcast. All the Americans, okay? Nowadays, nowadays, all, all. All Americans deserve the right to freedom. Freedom. Freedom to do whatever makes them happy without anyone getting physically hurt. Freedom to pursue life and liberty. The freedom. The freedom to walk down the streets in this country without fear of being harmed for your sexual orientation or the color of your skin, or whatever it is. Freedom. I hear all these country singers singing about freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. We're going to talk about freedom. Always talking about freedom. But a lot of them are actually hypocrites. Because it's complete freedom for them and their kind. Anybody who supports them, or their fans, or their political affairs, freedom. But it's freedom with conditions for anyone and everything that they don't like or does not align with what they like. Kind of sounds a lot like separate but equal, doesn't it? It's the politicians, folks. At the end of the day, it's the politicians. It's the politicians. They are controlling us. It is the opposite of what is supposed to happen. It is us, the people, who are, supposed to, who are supposed to let them know what we want. Not them telling us what they want and then us voting on what, uh, voting on it, whether or not we want it or not. Because how about I don't want either one of that shit. I want something different. I want something completely different. How about that? It's the politicians, folks. And they always... They always try and pass hurtful laws under the guise. Listen, beware of any politician that says the reason that they're taking away one of your freedoms is to protect the kids. They don't give a fuck about your kids. They don't give a fuck about your kids. Do you want to know how I know they don't give a fuck about your kids? Because we still have yellow dye number five. We still have kids standing on the side of the road in rural areas of the country at 530 in the morning. Some of them by themselves waiting on the bus. We still have underfunded schools and low paid teachers. They don't give a fuck about our kids. They damn sure don't give a fuck about my kids. They didn't want me to be free in the first place. They don't care about Joe kids. They don't care about my, they might care about their own kids. Maybe the kids of their constituents or maybe their immediate family, but make no mistake about it. They definitely don't give a fuck about your kids. They don't care. They don't care. If they cared, we would have better funded schools in all communities, not just white communities. They wouldn't cut school lunches for underprivileged children so that the people at the Capitol building can have lunch. They wouldn't do shit like that. They wouldn't do shit like that. They don't care about our kids, so don't ever let them lead you into believing they do. The only thing they care about is re-election. 
keeping that power, staying right where they're at so they can inflict more damage or more of their ideology on the American people while we just sit here and take it and take it and motherfucking take it and take it. And we're just, we're just steady taking it. (laughs) It's so crazy. The funny thing is, is we all know this. We all know it's the politicians. We all know it's the politicians. It's them and the media that are keeping us divided. We all know that. The funny thing is, is like I said, we, but the question is, the questions are, A, what are we going to do about it? And B, more importantly, when are we going to do something about it? When are we going to do something about it? We need to send a clear message to all politicians, all the citizens of this country, even the ones on the right side, the ones on the left side also, and all the ones right smack down in the middle. We need to let them know. We need to send all of these politicians a message. And the message is, we're fucking tired of you. We're fucking tired of you. We're tired of your bullshit. We're tired of your blowhard, empty ass promises. We're tired of your racism. We are tired of your classism. We are tired of your divisiveness. We are tired of your persistence to destroy the democracy in this country. We are fucking tired of you. We're tired of you. That's where we are, folks. That's the only thing that's going to do it. We have to get tired of it. That's the only way that anything changes. You ever notice that? Because the motherfuckers ain't doing it, ain't tired. They'll keep doing shit. You'll keep working on some broke shit until you get tired of working on that broke shit. And then all of a sudden, you want some new shit. Because this shit is broken and I'm tired of fucking with it. And that's what needs to happen. All of them. We need to wipe the slate clean with all of these motherfuckers. All the way down to the local level. All the way down. All the way down to the local level. Needs to be a complete overhaul. It really does. And I, I, listen, there's term limits. I think there needs to be motherfucking age limits too. I think there needs to be age limits to being the fucking president. If you're over 60, you can't be the fucking president. Period. If you're 55, you're pushing it. Like I'm 53. At 55, I don't want to be the fucking president. I want to chill, motherfucker. I want to chill. I ain't trying to be no president. The president of what? The president of lounging around my house and my motherfucking draws. That's what I want to be the president of. The president. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. But they do it because of the power. And I got to say, it must be nice to be able to, with a stroke of a pen, change the law. But what kind of, I mean, there's so much responsibility in that. And it's really obvious that people abuse this responsibility to the cows come home. They pin into law so many hurtful things to so many people that are Americans. And they claim to love America. So if you love America so much, then why are you deliberately trying to hurt it? Why are you deliberately trying to shoot yourself in the foot? Because that's exactly what we're doing here. We're shooting ourselves in the foot. And really what we're doing, we're all fucking sheep. We're all all over here. We're, 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 we're on some smoke and mirrors. You know that, right? They're over here fucking planning some other shit that we don't know about. I guarantee it. While we're over here bothering each other about racism. 
who's going to be the president next, dumb shit like that. Trying to erase black history, all kind of stupid shit. And that's what we are. That's what we are here, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we are here in the United States. And I hate to say it, but it's getting really, really, really embarrassing on all fronts. We're just embarrassing all of a sudden. I mean, embarrassing. I I liken the United States to the great and powerful Oz. Remember that? Wizard of Oz. Oh, the great and powerful Oz. And then they went behind the motherfucking curtain and it was just this. Who is this motherfucker? You're Oz? Get the fuck out of here. That's what I feel is going on in America. We got this big facade up, but right behind this big curtain, we have all these bullshit ass, great and powerful Oz wannabes. Sad. Well, I sure hope that in the future, that issues like this and issues like racism and you know, people trying to erase black history, I, I hope all of that shit just kind of goes by the wayside and people are just, people get fed up with it and decide that we're going to give it a go at a real society. We're going to try to have a real society. But we're never going to have that as long as the power structure that is in power still stands. And I'm not talking about any kind of coup. I'm just talking about going to the polls and voting, everybody. Go to the polls and vote. People of color, LGBTQ plus folks, go to the polls and vote. I don't care if you never voted before in your life. Go and vote. 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 It is very important. It is so very important. Because if we don't vote, then more atrocities and more freedoms and all of these things, they just keep getting taken away from us. And we know who's doing it. I'm not going to say it again. We know exactly who's doing it. You can look at the news and you can see who's taking away your freedoms right now. And you can be a brainwashed, a brainwashed moron if you want to and say, oh, no, that's not it. It's these, these it's the, 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 the left side. You can be a moron and, and think that if you want to. But we all know that it's the hateful right, and that's exactly what I'm going to call them. It's the hateful far right because all, all of their policies are deep-rooted and based in nothing but hate. Hate. Hate, supremacy, and arrogance. That's exactly what it's based in. No more, no less. So we need to wake up, folks. We need to wake up and realize, and again, send these motherfuckers a message. We're not, we not scared of you, and we're getting really tired of you. We're getting so tired of you. All right, that looks like uh, some Instagram bullshit I'm getting hit by, so I'm going to use that as an opportunity to end this week's podcast, folks. Thank you very much for joining me and listening to me banter on about the things that I banter on. I really do appreciate it. I want to thank my parents my mother and my father for for making me and giving me this brain that I have. I want to thank my wife for being the absolute best wife in the world. Baby, I love you. Mwah. I want to thank my best friend and producer, Jay Yandel, for giving me the courage and the backbone to stand up and do my podcast every week. I want to thank Gentry Thomas for giving me the platform to do my podcast. And listen, you guys, I got some other label mates, man. Make sure you're listening to the other podcast, the Outcast Podcast and Vinyl Boys. Listen, there's a, there's there's quite a few other podcasts out there, so make sure that you're listening to the other podcasts on the platform. So, thank you again, folks, and also like like last but not least, I really really I know I just did, but I really really want to thank you. I want to thank you for staying with me. I want to thank you for for sticking with me. Apparently, I got some good numbers coming back, from what I understand. Maybe not the best numbers, but some numbers that startled me. That was good to me. So, I must be doing something all right for people to continue to to listen to my podcast. So. 
Again, I thank you and I do appreciate it. And I will talk to you guys next week. Stay tuned for whatever next week when I'll be talking. I don't know what I'm going to be talking about. Again, I have no idea what I'm going to be talking about from week to week. Sometimes I know, a lot of times I don't. But come back, man. Come back. Check me out. Sit here and, and bullshit with me. Sometimes I just shoot the shit. I do random bullshit. I'm going to start doing pot luck. What's called pot luck, which is just picking random shit out of my DMs with, that people want to talk about and seeing, you know, if, if they want to have a dialogue about it. So like 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 this podcast go to my youtube it's darren d-e-r-o-n h-a-r-r-i-s h-a darren harris is my name damn it go to go to my youtube like my youtube subscribe you know i'll be putting out content on that all i do a, a bunch of crazy shit with my wife and my dogs and all kinds of stuff you guys i do appreciate you and i really want to give you some good good content every week so thank you very much for being encouraging and 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 you guys you know thank you keep up the good work yourselves keep up the good work being a good audience (laughs) and i will talk to you folks next week this is uh darren harris signing off peace love y'all you've been listening to the darren harris podcast subscribe to the show give a good rating and everything you need to know is at darrenharris.com